Hello friends, welcome to Dev Tips for Designers, a channel on YouTube where we talk about making websites and stuff. My name's Travis Nielsen. Last week we talked about this. This is how the internet works. If you haven't watched the video from last week, go back and do that now. It's super good. This is us here in that corner. We're a space octopus that writes HTML and CSS and puts it on servers for the internet to be built. I want to talk about how to organize a project and connect all the pieces to make a really awesome thing. Okay, so when I talk about project organization, I'm talking about where do you put the files on your computer and how do you organize the folders and subfolders and stuff like that. Project organization is a very big topic and one thing to keep in mind is that there's no one way to organize your project. Your needs will change depending on how big your team is, the technologies you're using, and how complex your project is. But there are a few best practices and common conventions that you should be aware of. So when I develop a project on my local machine, I need a place to develop inside. So I'm going to create a, a folder right here on the desktop. And just call that project folder. And then I'm going to drag this folder right onto my code editor called Espresso. The first thing I want to do when I open my code editor is create a new file called index.html. In any directory, the index.html will be the first thing that the browser reads. So our home page would always be called index.html, not home.html. So now that we have a root document, I want to put uh, just a quick filler in here. I have a few snippets. Here's an HTML5 page. Really easy. <clears throat> now that I have my index set up, I'm going to go and start creating my folder architecture. So a new folder and I'm gonna call this assets. Inside of my assets I generally have three folders. One's gonna be IMG for my images. Another will be CSS for my style sheets. And then the last will be JS for my JavaScript. And I create these empty folders because I know I'm going to need at least these three things and as a part of my assets. And I could put more in there. For example, if I want to have some custom fonts, I would need a place for them, but not right now. Inside of my CSS directory, I'm going to put a style.css document. Uh, and this will be where I write my styles in. And I want to go get an image. I just want to pop that in the image directory. And there we go. Okay. Now that we have a small project set up, let's look at the different type of links we'll need to understand. The first one is a CSS link. Right here in the head, I'm going to write link rel style sheet. Right here, I want to find the path to my style sheet. So I'm in the index.html, I need to access the assets, and then the CSS folder, and then the style.css. Now this style sheet should be linked up to our HTML project. Let's take a look. I'm going to call my body and say I want the background to be pink. Hey, look at that. That works. The path that I took to find the CSS is a relative path. As we can see, we're starting at assets. Index and assets are on the same level. If I open assets and then CSS, I can find style sheet. So assets, CSS, style sheet, each one of these lines here represents um, a folder. This style of linking is called a relative link. Now I want to load my JavaScript. Let's see. made a functions.js file and in my index I want to go here just above the body and write script. A script tag is the way that you would start a JavaScript call. Now you can you can begin writing JavaScript right here inside of the script tag or you can just fill in the source attribute with the path to your script. 
in this case again assets js functions.js that's where my that's where I'm keeping my functions I want to make another script tag because I want to load in jQuery jQuery themselves host a copy of jQuery on their website it's fast and easy to use, so I'm just going to use that. Now notice that the path that I'm using starts with HTTP. We talked in our last episode about how that's a hypertext transfer protocol statement. And what comes next is a universal resource locator or a URL of the, of the source of the document. Now when you do this, and you're not doing a relative path like the other two documents we've linked, this is called an absolute path. It means we're using code from another website entirely. We can do this with images, and we can do this here with jQuery. And let's see if it works. I'm just gonna write a little function here to turn the body. I'm gonna turn the body background color to another, um, another color. Let's make it green. Did that work? Oh, it did! So now we know that our JavaScript is working. Although I much prefer the pink background. One last thing I want to talk to you about using paths is instead of having this pink back, actually, that was fantastic, but I'm definitely turning that off. I'm going to comment that out. In terms of using path names, there's one more thing I want to talk about. In order to traverse the paths, it's important to know how to go backward and forward across them. So we want to use a URL for this image that, that is in our images folder here. So we have to back out of our CSS directory, then go into the images directory and link up that specific image. And because if we tried to hit up, oops, if we tried to go straight to that image directory as we might have, we'll notice that the images didn't show up. We need to go close out of CSS, go back one level, find the sibling images directory, open it up, and get that cat document. Now this is an award-winning design. I especially love the lasers coming out of the cat's eyes. When we go backwards and forth, through uh, folders and subfolders like that, it's called path traversal. It's important to keep that in mind because it can get complicated if we don't watch ourselves. Yep, 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 that's how you organize a project. Now you know. I'm including a link to a GitHub repo down below. I use this as a starter project to prototype smaller things. For larger projects, I used to use WordPress, but now I use Jekyll. It's a really awesome CMS, but it's really also very descriptive about how you set up your project. I'm not going to talk about Jekyll right now, but I will in the future, and I look forward to that. It's really fun. <clears throat> That's all I have for you today, but thanks for sticking with me. If you have any questions or have a topic in mind you want me to cover, leave it in the comments down below. Please share this video with a friend. It would mean a lot to me. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Can you say, dev tips? Dev tips. <laughs> Don't hold your face like that. No, I want to. Okay. Say, Dev Tips for Designers. Dev Tips for Designers. <laughs> Say, Subscribe to Dev Tips. Subscribe to Dev Tips. <laughs> Why are you holding your face like that? Because I'm a fishy. <laughs> Subscribe to Dev Tips. Subscribe to Dev Tips.